Hey, what's up? How you doing? It's your friend Phil, project management trainer and coach. Welcome to 40 Days to PMP and CAPM Exam Success. Today we're talking about a process called Plan Procurement Management. Now, this is our first take on anything to do with procurement. In the world of the PMI, when you think about procurement management, you should be thinking about what you need to purchase and how you're going to go about purchasing it. Whether it is a sub-product for the project, a service, some staff augmentation, whatever it is, it's in this process that you plan how to go about procuring what you need. You know, human resources, equipment resources, material resources, supplies, it's planned here how you're going to purchase these things so the major components of procurement to set the stage for what's coming ahead are first of all planning procurement management and then conducting procurements is the process you do next that means you are looking for a vendor a seller a supplier and you are awarding a contract to that seller or supplier. After you award the contract, the next process is you manage the contract, you manage the procurement, and we refer to that as controlling procurement. So you control the procurement, and last but not least, you close out the procurement. You ensure that all the contractual information has been carried out, has been understood, all the deliverables have been handed over to you, and then you close out the contract of procurement, okay? So let's start with the first process, which is today's process, plan procurement management. So, plan procurement management, the main goal is to create a procurement management plan. And the procurement management plan is a plan that sets the stage, gives you the roadmap for how to carry out procurements on the project. It will tell you how to conduct procurements, whether a bidder conference will be needed, how it will be conducted, and how the contract will be managed. Also in plan procurement management, project management team needs to think about the contract types. The contract types to put into effect within the contract. Is it going to be a fixed price, cost reimbursable, or time and material? If it's fixed price, remember the options you've got. Three options. Three options are firm fixed price, fixed price incentive fee, and fixed price with economic price adjustment. If it's cost reimbursable, then the options are CPIF, cost plus incentive fee, CPAF, cost plus award fee, and what's the last one? Do you remember what it is? Cost plus award fee is one. Cost plus incentive fee is the other. And last but not least is, do you remember what it is? Cost plus fixed fee. So those are your three cost reimbursable type contracts. And if it's time and material, just remember that T&M is a hybrid of both fixed price and cost reimbursable. The thing about time and materials, just remember the not to exceed value could be put into effect to ensure that overspending does not happen. And that's pretty much it. And all of this information about contract types is within the OPAs, Organizational Process Assets. So as you're reading Chapter 12, look out for these contract types. Be sure to understand them. Be sure to understand for the exam when to use each type of contract. A lot of information we can't go into here. But read your PMBOK guide if you are on our course read through the content and take all of those quizzes, those procurement quizzes that we have, take those and it will become clear what to do in what circumstance. There are some circumstances when 
a fixed price contract will be good and when it won't be good. A lot of people, they, they immediately say, oh, if I'm a buyer, then fixed price contract is the best. But if you're a buyer that does not understand what you need to do, perhaps you need to use a different type of contract. You need to get clarity on what you need to do before you hire a subcontractor to do it. You know, Because how are you gonna clarify to the subcontractor what needs to be done if you don't know? So it's not always as clear cut. There are some questions that will push you to the limit thinking about these contract types. It's not always clear cut, oh, fixed price because I'm the buyer. It's not always like that, okay? And the seller, I know cost reimbursable sounds good, but it's not as clear cut all the time, you know? And within cost reimbursable or fixed price, you've got these options. So you need to know when to use each one. You need to know when to use TNM versus any of those other ones. TNM is used a lot of times for staff augmentation on very short projects when the entire span of the project is not completely known, but you've got an idea of what it could be, and then you can use an, an NTE, okay? So in plan procurement management, your main aim is to come up with your procurement management plan. You also want source selection criteria to be identified. Source selection criteria is the criteria that you use to select a seller. So you need to determine up front what are the variables that we're going to be looking for in someone who will supply us X or someone who will carry out work Y and so on. Also here, this is where you come out with procurement documents. Now these procurement documents are things that we loosely refer to as RFPs, Request for Proposals, RFBs, Request for Bid, IFBs, Invitation for Bid, ITN or IFN, Invitation to Negotiate or inv Invitation for Negotiation, and so on and so forth. Know what those mean. Now, if the contract or if the work, the selection process, is entirely price-based, you won't be talking about an RFP, you'll be talking about an RFB or an IFB, okay? So bidding is used when you already know that the people that you're inviting can do the work. You know that they're capable. However, they all have different price points and you're interested in what the price advantages are and you go with the lowest bidder in many of those instances. When it comes to a proposal, it's more than just price. You wanna look at the solution, you wanna look at the company's um, approach to work and so on, okay? In a lot of firms, they have you know, the, the little black book of bad sellers who, who are not gonna be called back. You know, those people won't even be called to bid. You know, when, when the invitations are being sent out, you, you know those people aren't even going to make the cut. So people who are called to bid, you know, difference between that versus being asked to send in a proposal. All right. And one more thing regarding plan procurement management is the make or buy analysis. Make or buy analysis is an analysis of whether you should make something within the context of the performing organization or whether you should buy something from some other performing organization. We call it a make or buy analysis. As you carry out a make or buy analysis, you're going to end up with a make or buy decision. So the make or buy decision is an output of plan procurement management as well. Make or buy analysis is a tool and technique used to get the decision. So as you go through all of these processes, as you go through the days, pay close attention to what is a tool and technique versus what is an input or an output. And that will definitely get you some marks on the PMP exam and on the CAPM exam because the cheapest trick for any examiner, anyone writing questions, is to model you up by putting tools and techniques 
among inputs and outputs and saying which of the following is an input. <laughs> and then you end up choosing tools and techniques because you're like, oh yeah, it's synonymous with the process. Yeah, it's a tool and technique, it's not an input. So just be aware of things like that. Take a look below this video. You're gonna see the open-ended questions that I have and also the tools, techniques that I would like you to pay close attention to. All the best and speak to you tomorrow. What is it worth?